All right, so he's put his tools in the trailer that he's going to push down the way, down the rest of the stalls. And I want to tell you a little bit about, and this again seems very elementary, but um, from experience we know that you don't want to stack them together, you know, like this, because then the tines get all tangled up together and you can't get your tools apart. So put them with them face up and stack them separate apart like that, and that way they won't be all tangled up whenever you're ready to grab one. So, all right, we're going to go on down to the next stall. He's going to push from the sides of the trailer again, push it across here, and you can park it about there. You could even park it in front of the gate if you wanted to. We, again, have taken the horse out of this stall so that he isn't bothering us during the training today. So, one thing about having your, your trailer up this close is, do you see this water bucket right here? So, it could be very likely that you make a mistake and drop poop into the water bucket, which then creates a problem that you got to clean the water bucket and clean it out and put fresh water in it. Um, but, so, be cautious whenever you're parking the trailer next to the water buckets that you're, you're being cautious about getting the... Uh, poop into the trailer not just having it fly everywhere now this hay that is in here with this is tc stall and uh tc is uh he likes to have his hay out on the ground when he's eating it he doesn't really like it in his feeder but mike's going to try to sort through and kind of pick out some of the poop we'll discard part of this hay but then we'll also leave some of it kind of like we did with poetry if we can pull it across and it still be fairly clean you know, just barely pull it on the top layer and real lightly, then you can kind of scrape that up with, without it being too messy. But like over there where it's kind of thin, he's just going to go ahead and scrape all that up. And he's doing the line once again to kind of, you know, put it in a line for, um, for scraping up, you know, just to make it easier to scrape up. TC stall is easier to do it like this. Yeah. TC is one of these kind of horses, and he just poops wherever. He doesn't really, he's not real picky about where he poops, and it ends up spread out all over the place. So his is a little easier to do, kind of scraping it up in, in a straight line. Some of the other horses, and we'll show that to you in just a minute, are fairly neat about where they poop, and they don't uh, they don't just spread it out everywhere. So... So, um, there's, there's some kind of seasonal things with picking up poop that you need to be aware of. In the winter, if it's been really, really cold, or maybe you're coming out here and it's early in the morning, there is a possibility that this poop could be frozen to the ground. Um, these are metal tines on the poop rakes, so they are a little bit more durable, but they do still break. Um, so if you go to pick up a pile and it seems frozen to the ground... Um, you can go get the shovel and help yourself that way, or you can, you know, kind of pick at the edges like he's doing there to kind of get it to break loose a little bit, but don't use too much pressure. You know, you might even be able to kick it loose sometimes depending on how frozen it is. So if we've had a snowstorm and there's lots of snow and ice and water and stuff like that, it makes it a little bit more hard, but when it's pretty dry like it is right now, then it's okay. So, so you see how kind of, this is a big wet spot for TC. He likes to pee right here. So we're going to kind of pick up the poop here. And then Mike is going to rake some dry dirt over the top of this just to try to soak up this urine. Um, if you don't, you will eventually just end up with a little lake. Um, 
and so we like to put dry manure on top of it. So again, he's using the hand on the end of the, the poop rake with his other hand in the middle and picking it up like that. Okay, another trick on picking up poop is that you will put your fork down kind of flat on the ground and scoop underneath. Um, yep, kind of like that. And then kind of quickly scoop up and off the ground. And then you can pick up. Now, if you'll notice, sometimes people will come and they'll say, oh, this looks great. But when you really get to looking, there's still a lot of poop still laying here. So we want to come back and, you know, with the rake again and pick that up. There's some little pieces that just kind of were over here by themselves, probably got kicked by the horse um, and spread over to this little kind of wet spot we got going on right there. Now he's going to use the grass rake to scrape some dry dirt over this wet spot. And this is just to kind of facilitate it drying out a little quicker. And it can get kind of dusty doing this. Um, so especially if it's been a while since it rained. Uh, we've only had about a week since we had moisture. So it's not too, too dusty right now. But it can get very dusty. Okay. All right. You want to show the show rake now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So while that's kind of soaking it or just kind of soaking up the moisture and drying, we're going to show you what we call the show rake. Um, and this particular technique of raking is to, first of all, it'll make it look nicer and neater. Um, it also will enable us to get any little pieces that may be covered up by sand. And we didn't see when we were actually doing the pickup part. So he's going to rake all the way around the edges of the walls. That gets what's around the edges done. All right, so he kind of built a little box there, you know. This might be a little confusing to some of you, but you'll catch it. All right, so next he's going to start scraping at an angle from the corner out towards the outside. Okay, and then he's when he gets to the wall, he's going to turn around and he's going to come back opposite direction. So, I don't know if you can see it on this. You can kind of see it a little bit. Here's the, the rake marks going to the right. And then there's the rake marks going to the left. So, it creates kind of a little herringbone pattern here. And this is allowing him to gather up, if you look at this little pile of poop over here. That's something he gathered up just from raking that one little row coming this direction. So. You pick up the row. Yeah. So then that kind of gives you the ability to pick up that row. Now I typically, I get a little bit more before I do the pickup, but we're just kind of showing you guys for practice this time. So. Now we've done the inside part. Now he's going to do that same rake all the way around this part. All right, and then he's going to go back up. This just kind of is a visual on you know, kind of how much you rake the first time. Now, sometimes I'll rake a little less than this depending on the day. So if you're, if you don't have quite the reach that he does, you can make it narrower 
and just however far you can reach is how far you're scraping. And then he's going to come back to the right now. And he's going to pick up that layer from the first rake to the left. All right. Now, he's, you know, normally these picks, these piles would have been picked up already before we started our show rake, but we're going to, we're going to get caught up here on picking up these piles and then we'll come back with you. All right. So Mike's back again. He's raking some dry over that wet spot there, kind of cleaning that up a little bit. And then he's going to do the rake again around the edges, the show rake. Clean up a little bit more of that up there. Hope you guys can see this with the sun. Keep it count down low. So typically the horse would be here trying to eat on the hay or sticking his head in the trailer or something like that. You see how he's kind of digging up there? So that's some poop that got, kind of got trampled into the dirt. And that's, that's what's nice about the grass rake is it, it helps you get, you know, the, those little bitty pieces that kind of get overlooked sometimes. Okay, if you're kind of on the short side, you can always go underneath the rail, just like he's doing now. You don't have to go over the rail, because if you're a little shorter, sometimes that kind of makes you lose control of your fork um, whenever you're trying to reach up too high. Okay, so Mike's got it all cleaned up, nice and pretty here. We left the hay on the ground that TC's going to finish in a little bit. We always want to kind of look in the feeder, make sure that a horse hasn't turned around and pooped in their feeder, or maybe some a rock or something from the hay got in there. So just so that it's clean for the next time that we go to feed. Another thing that we'll go over in another video is actually how to do waters. You know when to clean them when to add etc but again we'll go over that in a separate video one last thing always kind of look around the stall look at the rails see if there's any metal poking out once in a while a, a horse will kick this and break a piece so just take one quick glance around the room and see if anything is sticking out that might hurt the horse. This is also a great time to realize that, oh, I left my rake. You know, or something like that. I left the shovel that I had to go get. <clears throat> Etc. Alright, so we're coming in the stall this time with a horse. Just to kind of show you a few techniques with the horses. See how the horse is going to come up here and say hi. Yeah. All right, so Mike's just saying hi to Cadillac, letting him know that he's here. He's walking around to his rump. He's keeping his hand on him all the time and walking around the back. Now, these horses... <clears throat> So that was Caddy testing to see if the gate was locked. 
and I had slid it over, but I didn't put the handle down, so he put the handle down for me. So whenever you're walking around the horses, you always want to put your hands on their hips Coming and around. walk around. around. That way they know you're back there. Uh, you don't ever want to startle a horse by coming up on them and them not knowing you're here. So pretend that, that Caddy was actually facing the back of the stall and we were coming in just like this. You see, he can't really see me where he is. He can see Mike, but he can't see me. And so if I walked up on him and he wasn't looking at me like he is now, he oh. might not know I was here. So always make sure that you say something, reach out and touch the horse, do something to let them know that you're around so they don't startle and spook on you. All right. So we're going to, this stall, we're just going to show you. Oh, um, okay. So Mike is reminding me to how to move the, move the horse is to take your thumbs, two thumbs up and push. Step over. Now, if he doesn't move, you Step can over. press and release, press and release so that he goes ahead and moves. So thumbs up, press and release, release, press and release again. Step over. There you go. Good boy. So, a flat hand won't really necessarily work because the pressure is not great enough. But if you use your thumb, typically you'll be able to get them to move. Back. And you don't just push and hold. You you push, release, push, release, push, Back. release. Back. Back. Up. Back. Good boy. Thank you. So as you can see, this is pretty yucky here. This is pretty wet. This has got a lot of urine, a lot of poop, some hay. It's a really pretty big mess. So he's going to just skim over it and pick up the poop that he can. Don't it. don't try to break break the tool. You don't, want to. <clears throat> you don't necessarily want to bang it if you can keep from it, you know. Shake it. Oh. Don't and look, Caddy's in our way. So I'm gonna kind of get down here below Caddy. And this is pretty typical of a horse to want to be right next to you while you're in here. <clears throat> They're not necessarily trying to trying to be mean to you or, or intimidate you, but they just they just want some love and that's all. Alright, so Mike's pretty much got it all picked up, the poop picked up, and it's scraped in a row, uh, scooped up in a row so he can pick up this. Now, you don't want to be banging tools against the pipe or against the trailer because it does uh, damage equipment. Uh-oh. <laughs> and that's kind of typical sometimes that'll happen caddy's just saying i want you to pet me a little bit so this is where you get your opportunity to get your horse hugs in <laughs> i have to work can you go to the back can you go to the back go to the back go on thank you now, you know, some of the horses aren't going to move quite that easy. Um, and probably especially for you as being a new person out here, they're not going to be as accustomed to you as they are to Mike. I am picking up dirt. Yeah, he's getting some dirt, and there's some hay that's kind of buried there. But 
but he's getting as much of that as he can. Kind of get some dry and try to rake over some dry as much as possible. And I'm going to finish doing. And uh, yeah, and then he's going to finish doing the rest of this stall just like we showed you on the last one. So I think that uh, you're always going to work from the back of the stall forward. Um, where we kind of mix this one up just so that we could do this little bit right here. Or clean your path. Yeah, clean your path as you come out. All right, so I'm coming in this stall, and I automatically see that we have a we have a structural problem in this stall. Look at that right there. Not necessarily structural, but having something like this sticking out um, could injure a horse. So this looks like... Maybe she kicked the wall in a little bit, and now she's maybe been rubbing her butt up against it and has it kind of pulled out of shape. So you need to, if you see something like this um, while you're doing the stalls, you need to let us know about this. That way we can, we can be fixing it. Okay, so I've finished all the stalls down here. Um... I'm not quite sure where the golf cart is, which that's a different video training on where to where to go get and park the golf cart. Um, but as I'm standing here, I have just left, because this trailer is going to be so heavy now, this is actually only two stalls worth in this trailer. Um, when I finished the four down here earlier, I went ahead and... and uh, and dumped it because it was definitely full it does get very heavy and hard to handle so don't try to push this trailer up the hill back up there to that little black trailer up there um, because it, it'll be too much for you so unless you really want to work out don't do that um, so I'm just gonna since I don't know where the golf cart is maybe Mike has it or something like that right now I'm just gonna leave it parked right here I am going to go ahead and take my tools out of it and put my tools back where they belong. So I'm going to walk back over here. Now, I always take one last look at the stalls and make sure I didn't leave any tools. Oh, there's a yellow one I left. So let me go get it as well. And then we'll put these tools back where they belong. Now remember, if you can dump the trailer and you can find the golf cart, then please do. Because there will be someone coming behind you that needs to do this job as well. So I'm going to put my grass rake right there and put my, my other poop rake right there. So that way they're nice and neat. They're not all tangled up together. They're not a jumbled mess. And uh, they're nice and neat for this next person. So, back to what I was saying. You know, if you can dump the trailer and you have the golf cart, please do dump the trailer. Because someone else will be coming back behind you um, that will need a clean trailer. So, uh, we will uh, we'll go over hooking up the trailer to the golf cart and all that in a different video. So... All right, so we got the golf cart now. We got it backed up there. We're going to hook the trailer up to the golf cart. Now you'll notice that this little thing is up. And when you push it down, it clips in right here. You see a little clip there. See that little clip? So if this is down, to disconnect that, you push up on this. And then that pulls up just like that. That's how it needs to be if you're going to be setting the golf cart on the ball. So I'm going to lift up, pull it up, and you want to make sure that it's all the way down, and then push that down until it clicks. And then take your hand, 
and check it. Because if you don't check it, sometimes the little mechanism in here um, will get caught and it won't go all the way down on the ball. So that's what happens when this little knob is not standing up before you start. So everything looks clear. We're going to get in the golf cart and drive up to the top where we can dump this trailer. Okay, so we have driven up the hill here and we are parked. Let me back up here so you can kind of see. We're parked to where the golf cart and the trailer are kind of on flat ground. And we've put the parking brake on the golf cart so it doesn't actually roll either direction. And Madeline's going to help us here unhook the trailer. So how do you do it, Madeline? Pick, pick up on this little latch underneath. Up. And then lift it and put it down on the ground where the wheel can roll. And we're going to push it over here to where Mike is. Why don't you get out of the way, Maddie? Back up. Kill? Okay. So, he's going to pull the tailgate off of the trailer. And you have to have your hands even on that. If you get it sideways, it won't come off completely. Alright, so he's going to push it up a little further. Okay, is that where, okay, is that where you want it dumped, Papa? Yes. Okay. Alright, so push that little lever down. And the trailer will dump. Now, this is another reason why if the trailer is super heavy and maybe you don't have as much strength, maybe you're like me and you can't lift up the whole thing like that, then, you know, you can dump it as often as you need to. You, you know, do two stalls. This was two stalls here and it's manageable at two stalls. Um, if you get four in here, it's too heavy to lift like that. So there's another way to do it um, that we can show you in person or something. But then you're going to slide the trailer back. Just come like that. And push it down. Push down the lever. Let it go over that lip. Pull the trailer out. And put the, the tailgate back in. All right. And then, okay, over here on this side is where we keep a shovel all the time. And then we lift this and keep it up towards the front of the trailer as much as possible. Now, we don't want to be throwing poop up over this white line. So it can be kind of mounted in the center, but you don't want poop up on this wood part because the wood is basically there as a wind guard so that when we go to dump it we are not you know having poop blow out all over the road so and then the the shovels are going to go right back here you just put it down there and leave it with the handle poking out like that now um yeah in the summertime we will have bottled sprayers out here and it will have fly spray in it um, winter time, of course, we don't have to worry about that. Mike's going to get a bottle right now. And it'll be hanging, like, right on the hitch there, or the, the little hinge. And you just spray down the top of it, um, with a little bit, a few squirts of the fly spray. So, this cuts down on our flies in the summertime. Alright, and then... Mike's going to close the gate that's around this trailer. Now, this is just a little three-wire gate. And the purpose of having this is so that a horse doesn't... If a horse gets out of his stall, which that does happen occasionally, they don't come over here and decide to take a walk on the trailer and uh, graze on the grass that might be in there. Now, the way you hook this is there's a little wire down there. You put the bottom of the post in the wire. And then the wire on the top slips over the top, just like that. All right. So that's just a safety measure for horses. So always put that gate back after you're finished. You don't necessarily have to put it back during 
the time that you're emptying stalls and emptying the trailer multiple times. But before you leave, that gate should be up so that horses can't get to that manure and that hay that's mixed in with it. We are driving back up. We're going to go around to the right of the, or the round pen. And go take this trailer back to where it parks when it's not being used. Be careful coming down this hill. Go slow. going to unhook the trailer and put it back in its parking spot. Oops, dropped your gloves, Mike. All right, and I've already put our tools back on this this wall. So um, one of the things that we are doing right now because of COVID is we're disinfecting tools, and I forgot to do that earlier. So Mike is going to show you how to do that now. Spray the handles down. And then there's paper towels there that you can just wipe them down. Anything that you touched. This is all just part of our COVID safety practices. All right, and then we're going to go over here and wipe down the steering wheel of the golf cart. All right, so wipe down the steering wheel, armrest. The key, if you've touched it, and the gear shifter. That's the reverse and forward gear shifter and the key. Then you can go take your, your bottle back. Put the bottle right there on the little post, gives it a little hanging place, and then there's a trash can in here. This door we have rigged right now where it doesn't latch, so you just push on it with your hand, and the trash can is right there. All right, and then of course if you're leaving, you would clock out, and uh, you should know where to do that by now, and uh, you're done. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time.